Buying your PC components from different shops can save you some money, but if you are new to PC building, this can be daunting. So, in this video, I will explain step by step how should you approach this. I will be using the Fantex XT Pro Ultra case for this AM5 build, which is a good budget case, and after this video, you will be more comfortable in undergoing such a task. I know one of the reasons I got so many spam texts and calls is because big companies can't keep our data safe. Recently, Ticketmaster was hacked and the data of 560 million users was put up for sale on the dark web. The data stolen includes full names, addresses, email addresses, phone numbers and credit card data. At best, this is going to lead to so much more spam, at worst, fraud. So, what is Ticketmaster doing about it? Nothing. They said they didn't think the hack would have a material impact on their overall business. All these companies happily collect our data but do nothing to protect it. That's why I use Aura, the sponsors of today's video. Aura alerts me when my data has been part of a data breach or leaked on the dark web. It gives me fast fraud alerts if anyone tries to use that data to access my credit or bank accounts. And it removes my information from data broker websites, so I get less spam. I also get things like transaction monitoring, a VPN, antivirus, a password manager, parental controllers, and identity theft insurance. I get this all in one app at an affordable price. If my info was compromised in the Ticketmaster data breach, I wouldn't worry, because Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. I'm not leaving myself and my family vulnerable to data breaches and if you don't want to either, you can go to https colon double slash aura.com slash gaming9 and try your first weeks for free, also linked below in the description. Every motherboard comes with its own manual that has a page with the layout. You need to understand how to read the layout of the board from the manual so that you can connect each cable to the correct header on the motherboard. This is very important. Have a look at it first and read the legends so you get a bit familiar with the layout. Every case comes with all the screws needed for the build. It is very important that you have that on hand as you will need those to set all the internal components in the case. As you look at the CPU with the writings on the CPU correctly positioned, not upside down, all AM5 CPUs have a top left orientation mark, an orange triangle. This means that you will have to put it like that on the motherboard, and if you pay attention, this mark can be seen as well on the socket itself. Position the motherboard on its own box or any other flat surface, and my recommendation is to put it on top of the anti-static plastic bag that the motherboard came with. Once that is done, you will first start with the installation of the CPU. Usually the motherboard's manual has a section dedicated for this. Have a look at it. This is quite easy, you need to position it correctly with the top left golden triangle aligned the same as the CPU socket on the motherboard. Once this is done, slide down the cover and push the lever down until you can slide it down as in the video. Don't worry about the plastic cover, you need to save that and store it in your motherboard's box. Now we will continue with the installation of the memory sticks. Starting from the left hand side, the slot closest to the CPU, we will install a memory stick in the second and another one in the fourth slot. Check that the clamps that hold the memory sticks are not in their upright position. The memory sticks can be inserted in only one way, so make sure that you align them correctly and don't be afraid to use some force as once slotted in correctly, you will see the clamps that were previously open now slot in perfectly and hold down the memory sticks. Some PC cases don't have enough space inside or it is difficult to install the CPU power cables when the motherboard is installed in the case, so my recommendation is to install them now. 
open your PSU box and find the cables that are marked with CPU on them. Insert those in the top left side of the motherboard, as usually there you can find it. Make sure to check the motherboard's manual. My advice is to install the SSD at this step. Use the slot closest to the CPU and make sure to remove the covers from the RAD's thermal pads. After, just install the SSD and use the screw or rotate the clip to fix the SSD in its place. Lastly, install the top SSD RAD. As I'm using an air cooler for this build, I would advise to install the splitter in the CPU fan slot, as seen here. If you are using an AIO, skip this step. Check the motherboard's manual for the CPU fan header's position. This is quite important because if the motherboard doesn't detect that a fan is connected, it will show an error when booting. If you are not comfortable to install the air cooler now, at this step as it's too big, for example coolers that have fans bigger than the usual 120mm, like the Noctua D15 or the Be Quiet Dark Rock 5, you can move to the next step. Usually I install the CPU cooler in this position when doing a new build. Most air coolers out there have their own mountings, so you need to check the manual on how to install it. For this Thermalite Phantom Spirit 120SC cooler, you need to remove the mountings that are pre-installed on the motherboard. Just unscrew them and store them in a safe location. I for one store these inside the motherboard's box. Once removed, proceed setting the spacers in their position and after screw in the mounting brackets. Before installing the heatsink, put thermal paste and make sure that you remove the sticker from the base of the heatsink. When it comes to applying thermal paste, I usually put a bigger drop in the middle and some small thermal paste drops between the corners and the middle drop. After installing the heatsink, install both fans and try to do some cable management afterwards. This task is a lot easier outside than inside the case, again depending on the case. After, make sure that you connect the fans to the splitter to provide power to the fans. If your CPU fans have RGB, chain them and insert the cable into the motherboard's addressable header. Put the motherboard in its position inside the case. I grip it by the cooler as it was already installed, but if you skip the step, carefully set the motherboard onto its stands. Make sure to align it with the stands that the PC case has pre-installed. Once aligned properly in the plastic bag that came with the case, the one that contains a lot of screws, search for the screw that looks like this. Make sure to install all screws in order to fix the motherboard in its place. Keep in mind that in the plastic bag you have usually more screws than you need. If you didn't install the air cooler previously, make sure to install any fan that sits closer to the CPU cooler before. Now go back to the previous step and watch the installation. Connect all cables needed to the PSU, like the PCIe cables, the motherboard's power connector. Now, slot in the openings above the CPU, the CPU power delivery cables, so that they dangle on the other side of the case. Now, connect the cables that provide power to the CPU to the PSU. If you have a GPU with more power connectors, make sure to use separate power cables for each connector. Once all of this is done, Install the PSU in the case. The PC case has some connectors that need to be connected to the motherboard. Most PC cases come with fans pre-installed. Make sure to look at the motherboard's manual to identify the chassis fan headers. These fan headers look the same as the one used for the CPU fans. Once identified, connect the case fans to one or more headers. I usually connect the front intake fans to one header and the rear exhaust to another header. The rule is to chain those fans that sit next to each other and have the same function. If you have top exhaust fans, I would separate those from the back exhaust, as the best approach is to exhaust air through the back so the top ones need to spin slower. After you install them, look for the front power connector and install that in the motherboard system panel header. Make sure to have a look at the manual, as if not installed properly, you may not be able to turn on the PC. 
Once that is done, install the front audio output cable into the front panel audio header. Next, install the 24-pin connector on the motherboard. Lastly, install the front USB cables into their corresponding headers. This case has a USB Type-C cable that needs to be connected to its header and another USB free header that connects to another header. Most, if not all cases, work the same. Do some cable management on the back. The step is boring, so do your best if you like to have a clean look. Use the cable ties that came in the PC case bag of screws. Remove as many plates as needed from the back of the case so that you can install the GPU. The best position is the top PCIe slot as that one that sits close to the CPU is the fastest. If you have an NVIDIA GPU with a PCU that comes with the old power connectors, make sure to install the power splitter in the GPU outside. Double check to see if it's connected properly. Bend the cables 3.5 cm away from the connector on the GPU. This will prevent any issue that may arise in time with the connector. Next, install the GPU. If you have a support bracket, install that as well. Once installed, connect the power cables to the GPU. Have a closer look and check that everything is installed correctly. Check CPU fan, front panel fan power, USB and audio, and that all power connectors are slotted in properly. If you installed everything properly, it's time to put the case in its upright position and connect the power cable to the PSU at the back. Once you connected the monitor cable, the HDMI or display port cable to the GPU that you installed in the previous step, make sure to turn the PSU on. Press the front power button and the computer should turn on. And that's it. You've done it. Congrats. If it doesn't start at all, this means that some power connector is not slotted in properly or your front power panel is not connected correctly. If you need to do some checks, make sure to turn off the power from the back of the PSU. If the PC turns on and it takes too much time to see anything on the screen, some other boards will display an error code on a tiny screen. Other boards have LEDs that, when stuck at a given color, it means that there is some issue and you need to check in the motherboard's manual what error that color represents. Use the internet as, nowadays, you can find most of the fixes online. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment below. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.